What is happening, everybody? It's your boy, Bill, from the uh, Kayfabe Cave Toy Group. Um, today, I'm going to be trying something a little bit new. Um, this is going to be the first episode of... <coughs> excuse me, the first episode of the Kayfabe Cave uh, Figured Out interview series. Um, you know, there's a lot of interesting people that we have in the group, and... Um, you know, the, the, the group is more than just toys. It's more than, um, you know, selling and buying for me anyway. Um, I started the group, you know, as a chance for connector, uh, collectors to, um, you know, get together, meet each other, you know, sell toys, buy toys, trade toys. Um, over time, you know, that grew. And I, and I noticed that a lot of the toy groups out there were kind of all doing the same thing. So I want to do something a little bit different. Um, and like I said, in, within the group, I have some, you know, some pretty good friends and some people that I've known uh, throughout the years um, that are, you know, not only involved in uh, toy collecting and the collecting world, but they also, you know, dabble in other things, uh, music, art. Um, and as we're going to find out today, uh, we're going to talk to um, Green Dragon, Jason Farrell. Sorry. Excuse me. Green Dragon, Jason Farrell, who has been um, a pretty good friend of mine for, for many, many years. I haven't, I, this is actually going to be the first time that I'm going to be speaking to him. Um, in, uh, probably several years, um, you know, we, uh, came up together in the, uh, the wrestling business. That's where I met him originally. Uh, but I realized, you know, doing this and, and seeing some things that he's been doing recently that, um, you know, I know him, but I don't really know him. And, um, you know, it's kind of a shame because he's a really interesting guy and, um, I have a lot of, a lot of really good, um, stories from back in the day involving us and our antics and things that we've been involved in. But before we get into all that, um, you know, in addition to being a pro wrestler, um, an MMA fighter, um, and um, he's got a pretty cool job, which I, I want to ask him a little bit more about because I'm not really sure exactly what he does, but he's always got guns and tactical gear and he looks like a full on like real G.I. Joe. Uh, so I want to ask him a little bit about that. Um, talk to him about some things that, uh, you know, were going on back in the day and um you know, we'll shoot the shit, and uh, and you guys can learn a little bit more about his new upcoming comic, The uh, Convictor, um, something that he's been working on. But like I said, I don't, I don't want to get too long-winded about it. Um, we're gonna get him on. And uh, oh, is this? Uh, oh, look at this! It's telling me that it's time. So hopefully, we have worked out all of our technical difficulties with this thing here. And let's see if we can't get Jay. On. Bear with me just a minute. All right, let's see here. We're calling. Let's see if we can get Jay on where we can see him. All right, he's not on yet, but he should be on shortly. So let's, um, Get some camera action going here. Let's see if we can. I so, said, this is the first time that we're going to be doing this. Um, so, we'll see if it works out. See if we have any kind of uh, some errors, technical difficulties. See if uh, Jay is even able to get in here. Disappoints. Oh, wait a minute. We got him in the waiting room. There we go. There he is. Yo, Yo what's up, dude? Hey. How are you, man? What's going on? Uh, living the dream. How about you? Uh, pretty much the same, man. Hold on. I'm just trying to uh, 
get all the cameras in such an order. I got some real high tech, uh, top top notch shit going that. on over here. <laughs> So. I see that computer screen up there from like the '80s. You like that, right? <laughs> the TV well, screen. you know what it is? I got um, I have uh, like, I, lost your... I got an NES and uh, all kinds of old video games that I can't really hook up to anything else but one of these old TVs. That's why I still yeah, got it down here. That's cool. So um, yeah, so every, everything's recording right now, man. Everything's real loose. Um, but more or less, yeah. ba basically, just to explain what I'm doing. Um, you know, I kind of you know, started the toy group just to ha kind of have, um, you know, collectors meet each other and, you know, buy stuff, sell stuff, trade, all that good stuff. Um, you know, but over time, it kind of became more of a thing where like, oh, all the groups are like that. So I kind of wanted to do some different things, you know what I mean? And um, I realized, I'm like, man, I have like so many interesting people in this group. Like, let's start talking to some people. And I, I appreciate that um, it, when, I, when I really first had the idea, you were kind of the first guy I had in mind um, to do this. And, um, and, and I talked to some other people as well, but, um, you were the first guy that was like, hell yeah, let's do it. You know? And, and everybody else is kind of like, yeah, let's see how the first one goes. And, uh, you know, we'll go from there. You know what I mean? So, so I appreciate you taking the time out to do it, man. Um, so yeah, I'll be the inaugural guy. yeah exactly. You're, you're the <laughs> guinea pig. So if, if it's the shits, it's on you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, anyway, man. So, so first things first, man, how, how are you? How you been? How, how are things? Okay, uh, just uh, our, our Kickstarter and all that for the comic, that all wrapped up, and we had a lot of obstacles that went through with that, because I had like a, a colorist that left, so I had to find a new colorist, and then, uh, so that took a while, and then, you know, we had a lot of, it was like the whole world was against me, trying to get this book out. Yeah. But, uh, and it's cool because I, I like I I follow comics a little bit, you know, probably not not as much as a lot of people too. So it, you know, that's an interesting uh, world to learn a little bit more about. Yeah, it's yeah. So we we got it, and now it's finally you know we released the uh, we had the PDF book, and uh, then we um you know we released that to the backers. But right now we have the actual book is being printed, and I'll have it in my hands probably in like a few days. So. Nice, nice. That's, well, just to give a just to give a, a little bit of a um, you know an intro and an update. So today we are talking with uh, Jason Farrell, um, known in the uh, professional wrestling world and the MMA world as uh, the Green Dragon. Um, now, when I when I when I've been speaking about you, I'm I'm finding myself uh, referring to you as former pro wrestler and former. MMA fighter, but I don't know. Is that is that official? Are you retired from the from competing, or are you still doing anything? Uh, yeah, I I just turned forty nine, <laughs> so uh, uh, my wife tells me I'm retired. Right. I, yeah. Same with mine with wrestling. So I get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah. That's it's, cool, uh, man. You know, you always I, the MMA stuff. Like I mean, I still train and stuff, so that's one thing. You know what I mean? But to actively compete. I'm way out of my prime for that. I mean, can I still tune somebody up? Yeah, of course. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I, you know, the other, like wrestling though, it's just like, it's a different thing. It's a different, because, you know, you, you know, you crave the pop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. The, you know, the music, I can't hear War Machine when I lose, when I still have my blood rise. I get it, man. Mean? And just, I try to tell people all the time that, that don't really know what it's about, that, um, you know, if you, if you don't know what that's like to that, that feeling, there's really yeah. nothing that can match it. You know what I mean? It's, but yeah, yeah it's one of the few natural highs that are out there. Yeah. Right? You're just right, the, man. You're right. Just the whole, the whole, it's, you know, the, just how it just rises inside of you and you just like your persona takes over and you know, I get it, man. I totally get it. Um, but yeah, like I said, we're, we're not getting any younger, but you, you don't, you look like you don't age. <laughs> You don't age at all, man. You look exactly the same as I remember from back in the day. Jesus, I don't know. I look like forty miles of bad road. Yeah, right. <laughs> like me, I'm go I'm going for fat Jesus right now. I'm working on it right now. So you know, I, I grew mine out too. Like I said, it was during COVID. I was like, you know what? So, the hell with it. Same thing. Plus, I'm getting a big uh, crop circle in the back, so I'm like, you know what? This is probably the last run for uh, for some hair, you know. But um, yeah, yeah. yeah like uh, when this was all going on, I know we we had originally talked about um, doing the interview and. And then, I think it was maybe a day or two later, uh, you had posted um, what I reposted the other day. You had posted, you know, your long-winded uh, thing, which, yeah. which, to me, kind of, like, encapsulated exactly what this whole group thing is about for me now. You know what I mean? So it's like, uh, 
you know, you see what's going on out there in the world every day, you know, and, and this whole thing for me is kind of like an escape from all that. I come down into my little cave and, and I do my toy repairs and, you know, I, I tinker and I do my thing, you know. Um, but this is a place where I wanted everybody to be able to just come. And yes, while we're all about toys, but, you know, there's more than that. So people can share, you know, their art, their their music, their, you know, anything, whatever it is that that you know, makes them feel like you did when you realized like, okay, I'm going to do this now. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's like a never grow up kind of a thing just because you're, yeah. just because you're older you know, or just because you're grown up doesn't mean you have to grow up. You know what I mean? And, right. uh, and, and what you had to say the other day kind of encapsulated that for me, you know, um, which is cool, man. So, um, so if you can, I mean, the, the convictor, I've, I've been watching you for the last couple of years, you know, kind of putting it over and saying it's coming and showing this and showing that. And, uh, it's awesome to see that that's like finally coming together for you, like for real, you know, and it's, um, you know, generating buzz. Obviously you said about the Kickstarter, like, I think that the Kickstarter took off and, and kind of exceeded where you were trying to go quickly. Right. Yeah. It was like, uh, just the, like, i been drawing like i'm 49 now so i literally the first time i drew a the, the you know what would be the proto version of this character the first time i did that was uh i was like 10 right it was right. like 1984 or something and i i drew it and i was just like i ah, you know what it was my friend had drawn a punisher the punisher and and I was like, ah, oh, it's cool. You know, he drew and he gave it to me. And I was like, yeah. And I was looking at it. I was like, what if I put the skull in his face? So I took it off the chest, put it on his face. And then I was like, I was, and at that time I was really into the, at the they just came out, the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, books, the black and white books. Yeah, the, the Eastman and Laird books. Eastman and Laird. Yeah, and I was really into them. And I was really into Daredevil. And I was really into G.I. Joe and all that stuff. And so I kind of threw all that shit <laughs> on this guy, you know, and I mean, I gave him a sword, I gave him tassels on Just his Just everything, mask. right, right. Yeah, gave him a bandolier, like Firefly, because I, you know, I love Firefly from G.I. Joe, and uh, so we did that, and uh, so it kind of took off from there, and I, you know, I drew him, I tweaked him over the years, and you know, I have my own comic strips I put in the school newspapers and stuff like that, and, uh, you know, my art teacher in high school was really awesome about it, and she would let me put up a strip every every week, and uh, so, you know, it was just something you did. I made like, my own little comics, you know, at the time. In right, the 80s right. and 90s, you know, Xerox was king. <laughs> so I Xeroxed right. everything. Yeah, exactly, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I did that. And what ended up happening was, I, you know, life. You know, I had a kid right out of high school. And, uh, you know, so I got into that. And then I had more. And I had another kid. And then I had another kid. <laughs> you know, and, you know, and then, you know, then it's like, okay, you get a full-time job. You know, you have a career. Yeah, and it was like one of those things that kind of backburned. And then, of course, I was hugely into martial arts my whole life, so I had that. And I was teaching guys, and then, you know, then I got into fighting myself. And we obviously, you know, from there, you know, wrestling and stuff. So it kind of, all that, it got pushed way down. Uh, I mean, I still, like, drew here and there, but you know, it was like one of those things. Like, he was always my main character. I have lots of other characters, but he was always right, my main right, character. Right, right, right. And I, I just decided that. And I said I was like a couple years ago. I was writing a bucket list because I'm old, you know. Right, like, right, right. Ah, yeah, I'm like ah, oh, you know, stupid. All the stupid check marks on a bucket list that old guys write. And then my son was there, and he's like, "Hey, Dad," he's like, "You should really make a comic book, you know? Why don't you make a comic?" And I was like, "Yeah, whatever." And then like later that night, I couldn't get it out of my head. I just couldn't get it out of my head because it's like that time it was 2000 and I don't know whatever it was 2019, and. uh it's so much easier to be a self-published comic book uh, creator nowadays. Right, right. There, used to be. You have so many there's more a, options, yeah. There's yeah. Million, yeah. There's a million mediums. And uh, so I was really, I dove into YouTube. I learned all I could about it. You know, I got on Instagram and met up with a bunch of other creators. So it kind of grew from there. And I really got passionate about it. And, and, it, and uh, here we are. You know, I decided to do a Kickstarter for the comic. It was, I was drawing one comic and then this other comic kind of had fans that they were like, Hey, why don't we, uh, I put this stupid poll up on Instagram. It was just a fun poll. It was like, if my character could fight a classic movie monster, who would you pick? And I had this poll and, uh, they all picked the Wolfman, like the Wolfman one. And I was like, oh, I guess I got to make this comic with the Wolfman. So originally it started out as a little comic, but then it grew into this whole story. 
and we threw Dracula in there because he was, he came in number two in the poll. And I was like, yeah, that'd be cool. So I had to set this whole thing. I created this whole story out of something that was originally just going to be like a Mortal Kombat fight. Like, my character versus the Wolfman. Right, right, right. And right. they fight, yeah. But uh, it grew into much more. So we went to Kickstarter with it. And, uh, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't, crowdfunding is the thing now for independent comics. And I didn't know much about it. But, you know, I picked the brains of everyone that did. And I had a lot of good support behind me. I built a pretty organic fan base on Instagram. And uh, I think our budget was our budget was like $1,500. And that was just to print the book and pay uh, the colorist and pay the cover artist. Right, right. I wasn't making anything off of it. Just pay for the printing and all that. And, <laughs> now, how does how does that happening. how does that process work? That, so you, like when like when I think of okay, this, Jason's going to create a comic book. Like I'm thinking, you're going to sit there, you're going to draw it, you're going to do the text, you're going to do the color, you're going to do the ink. But that's not how it works, yeah. right? You have to actually. Uh, it can be. You know. I know there are some guys that do the whole thing themselves. Right, right. Um, and originally, I was going to do that, and uh, but I decided that I had some really. Uh, creative friends i was gonna ask did you did you, said, you know, you know some what? people that that could help you out with that that's that's pretty cool yeah right yeah and i got a uh you know i had somebody do the covers i had a guy who just really specialized in covers uh, covers of comics so i'm like you know do the cover i'll do the interiors and so i i drew the interior of the book and i uh i inked the book and i had my friend chris who's you know does has his own comic book series and he uh offered to letter it to do the lettering because like, i'm not i'm a traditional artist i'm not a digital artist like that's something i dabble in i'm not good at. right like, right I'm literally pen to paper that's been same good. yeah so yeah they get that to translate you know because the lettering and stuff i wasn't going to write that shit by hand like that's you know i don't have the time it, for that. it's a skill no all to itself yeah. So, yeah so but uh yeah it, like this is this is literally the entire comic this whole thing oh like, nice this, man nice this is, you know, these are all the ink pages. This is what a comic is before it becomes a comic. So. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, and it, this is 30 pages of book right is here. That, is that the original uh, artwork? Yes. Yeah, that is actually the stuff that I drew and inked and sent out to my colorist who colored it, digitized it, and then it became what it, you know, it became the book. Oh, so. that's great, man. That's great. And now... Yeah, it's a lot. It was a lot of work. So we had a fifteen hundred dollar budget, and I knew I, you know, I had thirty days to hit fifteen hundred dollars, and I knew that I, I would make funding within thirty days. Like I didn't think I wouldn't, because I had a lot of good support, and I made, we fully funded in ninety minutes. Uh, like it blew me away that literally first time I hit it ninety minutes after I launched the. the kickstarter we were fully funded yeah i I remember it being pretty quick yeah yeah by the time i had even seen it 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 had already met its uh, number and and then after that we overfunded we end up making like over five grand on it uh which allowed us to put into more book to create another you know another book you know we because i don't i'm not i'm not in i'm gonna tell anybody out there that doesn't know about uh, independent comics or comics in general if you're in it to make money get out Right, so, but, you know, it's just, just, yeah, just yeah, like wrestling, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. it's like indie wrestling. If you're in it to make money, you better get the hell out. Of it. Right, so, okay, exactly. Hey, we're independent in it. You're not making money. Oh, uh, that's but, great, uh, man. So for for people that want to, it, it, I know you sent me a couple of links that I'll include with this when I post it. But uh, where can people yeah. check you out right now? Where's the best place to go? Instagram is where my biggest presence is right now. Uh, and uh, you just look uh, the convictor. And, uh, you'll find me. It's a, uh, it's a uh, the underscore convictor. So cool. there's another convictor out there, but he's the rapper or something. I don't know what the hell. That is. I don't know how to create the name, but apparently somebody else is using it. I don't know. But do you get any kind of? Do you get any kind of issues like that with people trying to say, oh, you know, you took this or you took that or? No, you know. uh, the character, the name itself is super unique because I, I literally created it from, you know, like it, it's not. It's not ER, it's OR. So I kind of created the name. Um, but it is, in religious circles, they use the name Convictor as a, uh, for somebody that is very, um, that is very, very devout, that they're very into the, the, 
the religion, so they're, they're you know because they believe in their convictions. In their convictions, you know, ah, so, okay. That's part of my character's world too, so you know there's some involvement in that. Like I use I use the word convictor, and people think that it's like a uh, like like a uh, like a legal like conviction, court and you get right? Convicted. Yeah. That that it's was my not, original thought, uh, right? Yeah. I use it as the sense that he is uh, that he is he is very entranced in his belief. That, so that's way deeper, yeah. Like, yeah, so it's different for me. 